What is going on guys, Andrew Acevedo back with another video, and it's been a minute since I've done a sit down video, obviously we kind of knew the channel update a couple months ago, the channel's been pretty quiet, you know, I popped in on, haven't been on all the Mets weekly lately, and yeah, life's kind of up in the air, uh, maybe some stability hopefully on Tuesday, and maybe some content potential, I'm not planning, potentially a live stream this weekend playing MLB The Show. Maybe very possible you get some MLB The Show gaming this week. Not guaranteeing it, but it could be potentially some, some game content coming back this week. And so let's get into today's video, which we are going to predict the MLB postseason. Who is going to win the World Series? Who's going to win the wild cards and all that? We're going to break it all down, give you my my predictions. Do I know anything? Well, according to last year, I know pretty much everything because I guarantee I got all the American League... Uh, side of the bracket correct and the world series world series mvp and world series champ I mean, it's pretty obvious but the world series mvp was my was my one note like yeah, yeah, i see the future a little bit so uh put your money on it if you want i highly doubt it but obviously we've got two wild card games nlcs alcs alds nlds and of course and with the world series we're going to break everyone down and let's kick it off with the wild card games and starting in the american league Starting off, the American League is going to be the Tuesday, the first game of the wild card, and it will be the New York Yankees traveling up to Boston. The historic rivalry gets another chapter in the postseason. For the New York Yankees, they'll be starting their ace, their multi $300 million man, Garrett Cole, taking on the Red Sox and Nathan Evaldi. Has some postseason success, obviously, in the out of that huge bullpen game in 2019, uh, 2018 when they won the World Series. Yeah, our 2018 World Series. Uh, so, again, Faldi's going to be good. And you look at the stats, obviously, Garrett Cole uh, this year, 16-8, and eight, a 3-2-3 three, three, all right, and 181 innings pitch, 243 strikeouts. His career postseason success, he's 8-4 and four with a 2-6-8 ERA and 84 innings pitch, 108 strikeouts. You look at some of the big matchups that he's going to be. Obviously, look at those big hitters in the Red Sox order. Alex Verdugo for his career against Garrett Cole. Four for 14, two doubles, a homer, 286, 929 OPS. Bogarts is five for 24, a double, a homer, seven strikeouts against. Uh, what's it called? It, uh, not a great OPS. Rafi Devers is four for 19 against Garrett Cole, but four, three of those four hits are homers. Also, eight career RBIs. Uh, nine and nine, 34 OPS. One of the surprising guys, Kike Hernandez, is five for 11 in his career, two doubles, a homer. Against Garrett Cole and obviously JD Martinez, the DH, six for 25, two doubles, two homers, 12 strikeouts, a 935 OPS in their careers versus Garrett Cole. Go on the other side, Nathan Evaldi, the Red Sox, this year 11 and 9, a 375 ERA, 182 and a third innings pitch, 95, 195 strikeouts, ERA plus of 126. Actually led the league in FIP with a 279 FIP. Uh, a career in a postseason, again, he's 2-1 and one with a 1-6-1 ERA, 20, only 22, and a third innings pitch with 16 strikeouts. If you look at their big, uh, their you know, their lineup, the Yankees have a very good lineup. This is the numbers against Mr. Um, uh, Evaldi. Judge, 8 for 20, uh, two doubles, a homer. Uh, Grizzo is 3 for 9 against, so 12 ABs against him. Stanton, 7 for 27, two home runs. Gallo, 1 for 7. Gary, 2 for 14. And Kleber is 7 for 29 against Avaldi. Obviously, the Red Sox have a very questionable bullpen. Kind of their weakest link, but they do have a great offense. So do the Yankees have a really good bullpen and one good starting pitcher that we care, Cole. So my prediction for the American League wild card, I am going to predict the Red Sox to win 5-3. Garrett Cole will probably go seven, give up two. Um, and then the Yankees bullpen, some probably Chad Green is going to give up a big three-run homer in like the eighth inning, and the Red Sox will win 5-3. That is my American League wild card. So I would have the Boston Red Sox playing the Tampa Bay Rays. Moving on to the National League wild card game. This is the better game in my opinion. You have the hottest team in baseball, the St. Louis Cardinals, Going down to LA and playing the 107 win team, 106 win, I'm sorry, Los Angeles Dodgers. You're getting Max Scherzer, the Cy Young candidate for the Dodgers. The St. Louis resident and St. Louis narrative, native, 
Uh, Max Scherzer facing his favorite team and going up against Adam Wainwright, who just continues to just throw good curveballs and continue to have success. Obviously, the Cardinals had that great 17-game winning streak to just come from out of nowhere and allow what the Cardinals do with their magic of just dark art magic, turning guys like Tommy Edmonds and the Dylan Carlson's and you know got Tyler O'Neill's who just turn up and just become great players by just putting a Cardinal jersey on. Uh, we'll start off with Wainwright. Obviously, uh, historically this season, he had seven, He went 17-7 and seven with a 3.05 ERA, 206 innings pitched, 174 strikeouts, and an ERA plus of 1.7. For his career in the postseason, he's 4-5 and five with a 2.89 ERA, and 109 innings pitched with 118 strikeouts. You look at some of the big matchups, again, the Dodgers have a lot of good hitters, but they will not have Max Muncy. So that's a big loss for the Dodgers, but the Dodgers are so deep. I mean, Muncy's great, but they still have a great lineup. Obviously, starting on the top, the best shortstop in baseball, Trey Turner. Uh, five for 12 against his career against Adam Wainwright. Justin Turner, the other Turners, three for nine. Corey Seager, two for seven. Mookie Betts, two for four. A.J. Pollock, three for eight. And I believe Will Smith is 0 for four against Adam Wainwright. On the Dodgers side, the Dodgers are obviously Max Scherzer. This year, combined with the Nationals and the Dodgers, a 15-4 record, a 2-4 ERA in 179 innings pitch and 236 strikeouts. In his career in the postseason, he has 7-5 record, a 3-3-8 ERA, 112 innings pitched and 137 strikeouts. If you look at the Cardinals batters' careers against Max Scherzer, Nolan Arenado is 2-10. for 10. Harrison Bader is 2-for-10. Dylan Carlson 0-for-7. Matt Carpenter, who I think you could potentially see playing in this game, is 7-for-28 in his career against Mac, uh, Max Scherzer. Tommy Edmonds 4-for-9. Goldschmidt is 5-for-32. Does not have success going up against uh, Max Scherzer. Neither does Yadier Molina, who is 1-for-17. And Tyler O'Neill is 0-for-3. Everyone's picking the Dodgers because the Dodgers are better, are a better team. That's not even close. But this being in the wild card game, being a one and done, the Dodgers are white hot, the Cardinals are white hot. But I feel the Max Muncy injury could be could play a factor, and the Cardinals dark magic, and they have historically played well against the Dodgers in the postseason. I am picking the underdog. I am going the St. Louis Cardinals to win this game, three to two. I'm going to say it's going to be a big hit from Tyler O'Neill late in the game to give the Cardinals the lead. Scherzer and Wainwright are going to duel it out. I could see Wainwright compl- doing a, uh, throwing a complete game because Wainwright in the postseason, I know it's rare, but he's a guy who will just eat innings. I could see him going at minimum seven innings if he pitches well. Could see more from Wainwright. I'm going the upset here, and I'm going the St. Louis Cardinals to upset the Dodgers to show even more the last year for the L.A. Dodgers. They are not a real World Series champ. They are the Mickey Mouse World Series champs and get embarrassed again. So, again... Taking, taking the underdog, going with the Cardinals over the Dodgers. Now with my wild card games all set up, let's show up the brackets. I'll throw the bracket up, bracket, my bracket up here right now. Obviously now we have the Boston Red Sox taking on the number one seed in the American League, the Tampa Bay Rays. And the number two seed, Houston Astros, hosting the Chicago White Sox. In the National League, the number one seed, San Francisco Giants, are going to go up against the St. Louis Cardinals. And it'll be the number two seed, the Milwaukee Brewers, taking on the Atlanta Braves. That is what the bracket and prediction. Let's go with the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Boston Red Sox. And I gave the Red Sox a good win, but this is where the Red Sox fall. Tampa Bay getting the win. I'm taking Tampa Bay in four games over the Boston Red Sox. Tampa Bay is just Tampa Bay. You guys have Juan DeFranco, who has been an amazing rookie. He's lived up to that number one overall prospect in Major League Baseball potential. Randy Arozarain, Nelson Cruz, Austin Meadows. Bro, so all those guys that you just never know, and it always seems they keep developing. Mike Zunino was an all-star this year. He's had a great year. Brandon Lau in the postseason always seems to show up, unless it's against, isn't well, mostly against the Yankees, but he had some big moments in the postseason, a la last year. Uh, obviously, you know, same as Randy Margo. They're going to play with great defense. They're going to pitch well. Guys like Shane, potentially Shane Baz, obviously Ty Glasnow, I believe, is hurt. Obviously, they traded Blake Snell. They traded, they, they lost Glasnow. But they continue to find guys in the bullpen. It doesn't matter in the rotation, in the bullpen. It does not matter. Tampa Bay can throw anybody at any time, and they're going to be successful. So I'm going to go Tampa over Boston in four. I don't think the Red Sox. Again, I think the Red Sox do beat the Yankees, but I do not see the Yankee or the, the Boston Red Sox beating the Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa's too deep. They got a better bullpen. They got better defense. The Red Sox do have a better lineup, but. 
the Red Sox run the Rays find ways to score. So I'm putting Tampa Bay in the American League Championship Series. Moving on to the other side of the American League bracket, and I'm going to go with the Houston Astros hosting the Chicago White Sox, the two seed playing the three seed, and I am going with, I guess technically the upset, I'm going to go with the Chicago White Sox over the Houston Astros. I just trust the Chicago White Sox pitching if Lance Lynn is healthy with Carlos Rodon 1-2, plus that bullpen if Craig Kimbrell can be decent and get any turn back to any form of that early season with Hendricks and, and Kopech and Groshay and Bummer. Their bullpen is amazing. And if Craig Kimbrell can just pitch well for a two-week stretch, which he possibly can, that makes that bullpen even better. With Carlos Rodon, Giolito, and Lance Lynn in the rotation, Dylan Ceased in that rotation, not even in, ex- including their elite offense, Robert, Abreu, Grandal, uh, um, uh, Eloy Jimenez, you know, they picked up Cesar Hernandez, Tim Anderson. They have in a great offensive team. And obviously, you got to talk about the Houston Astros. Obviously, they lost Justin Verlander. Zach Granke is just hanging around in that rotation. Blake Taylor, uh, Christian Javier. They have a lot of good pitching. They have a good bullpen with adding Kendall Graveman, Ryan Presley in the rotation, in the back of that, back end of that bullpen for Houston. Obviously, offensively, maybe the last Sharaf for that infield with Altuve, Correa, and Bregman. Um, you got Michael Brantley, you got Jordan Alvarez. They have a lot. Of, they have some great offensive pieces, but I just think I know the postseason's experience is on the Houston Astros side. But if I'm taking money, I'm going to take the Chicago White Sox. I know that everybody's kind of, you know, not loving them in Milwaukee because you know they won their easy divisions on you know and they've kind of you know just you know played out the rest of the season not playing with any urgency. There's a lot of scare. You know, people a lot of people are scared about them, but I'm not. I think I'm taking the. Uh, Taking the White Sox, they have better starting pitching. They have as good a bullpen when it's when it's going right, and equally as good offense. So I'm going to take the true number, the best pitch starting pitcher is on the White Sox and Lance Lynn. And Carlos Rodon, Rodon has pitched amazing this year over anyone in the Astros rotation. So I'm going to go in five games to the Chicago White Sox. Moving on to the National League side, and we're going to start off with the number one seed, the San Francisco Giants, taking on the St. Louis, the winner of the Wild Card game, the St. Louis Cardinals. And again, I'm going upset here. I think the magic of the Cardinals against the magic of the Giants. Again, this was the 2013 NLCS, you know, uh, in 2013, uh, in 2012, no, 2012, when the Giants won 2012, 2014. I think it was 2014. Beltron was was in uh, St. Louis. I think it was 2014. Sorry, uh, history is a little blurry right now. So again, Two of the biggest surprising teams of the year, obviously, the Giants winning the American, the National League West. No one saw that. And the Cardinals coming out of nowhere at the, at the All-Star break to the hottest team in baseball and sneaking into the wild card and winning, you know, winning 17 in a row in September. Um, pitching from the Giants, Gosman, Stefani. They have a great bullpen, Jake McGee. They, have, they continue to find guys. Gabe Kapler looks like a competent manager now. Who would have thought that? Obviously, Posey's come back after the COVID season, opting out. He's back. Brandon Belt's injured. Brandon Crawford had a tremendous year. Evan Longoria's turning the clock back. Guys like Levant Wade Jr., Mike Yastrzemski, they find these guys offensively. The Giants have played well. They, they play well. They're, vet, they're a veteran core. They have the postseason experience. But I'm taking the Cardinals because, again, when the Cardinals always do this, people underrate them. But when they get hot going into the postseason, they are a dangerous team because historically, they are they're really good, always good in the postseason, and they find a way to sneak into at least always the NLCS, a la last year. I don't think anyone thought everyone kind of put the pick the Braves over them, and they went out and steamrolled them. You know, I won in five games, but you know, it was close. And in game five, they destroyed them. So like they're all the St. Louis Cardinals are always that team that just like kind of like the Giants, where like you can never count them out. So I'm gonna you know, pitching wise. I don't like they don't have Jack Flaherty back, but they do have Dakota Hudson. The the pitching in the rotation for the Giants is better, but I would I'm gonna take the Cardinals. It's just and the Cardinals have played well against the Giants this year. I think they that was like they won. I think they played six times. The card the Cardinals won four, so they played them well. Obviously, the Giants did acquire Chris Bryant, but you know they got the the Cardinals just for some reason really played the Giants well this year. So I'm gonna take. The giant, the uh, Cardinals to upset the Giants. The Cardinals take out the beast of the West Coast and get to the National League Championship Series. In the other side of the National League, it'll be the number two seed, Atlanta, uh, Milwaukee Brewers, hosting the Atlanta Braves. 
And this is going to be, I also, I did not say I'm going to take the job, the Cardinals in five in the last series. I think this is the only sweep you get. I think the Brewers are just going to sweep the the Braves out of, it's not even going to be close. I know Austin Riley, Swanson, Freddie, uh, Duval, Adam Duval, excuse me, uh, Jorge Soler is produced for them offensively. But that pitching staff, even losing Devin Williams for the Brewers, going Peralta, uh, Burns, Woodruff, Peralta, one, two, three. Yes, the United the Braves are going to throw Charlie Morton and Max Freed, but you do not compete with that one, two. Very few teams can compete with that one, two, three. And offensively, Willie Adams has had a really good year. Uh, was a great acquisition from David St- for from, for David Stearns and the Milwaukee Brewers. Obviously, El Garcia has played really well. Uh, you know they get their production from anyone. You know, have Omar Narvaez behind the plate. Christian Yelich again has another bad season. Jackie Bradley Jr. another bad season. But they play good defense and they score enough runs with that pitching and bullpen. You know, guys like uh, Lauer, uh, the lefty. Uh, Hunter Strickland uh, is another guy in that for They just find, kind of like how Tampa Bay, they just continue to find arms to produce in those spots. And, again, that 1-2-3 is going to be very tough to beat. And Atlanta, again, like, like they said, they got their 1-2, but the number three starter is who? Uh, Soroka is not back. So it's going to be, what, Hoskar, Neo, you know, maybe? Like, I don't even know who the Braves would go in game three against Peralta. And the Braves' bullpen is okay, but, again, they're not, they're not on the level with the Brewers. They don't have a Cunha. I mean, Freddie's and Albies, and you know, they have a, they have a good offense. But in the postseason, a la while the Yankees never do well in the postseason, great pitching shuts down great hitting. So, and the Brewers do the little things right to manufacture runs. I'm taking the Brewers in three games to sweep the Atlanta Braves. Now moving on to the American League and National League Championship Series. Let's start off with the American League. Who is going to be repre- representing the American League in the 2021 World Series? I am picking the sh- Tampa Bay Rays. I, I, I know I've been on record saying that I want to see the Chicago White Sox in the World Series. And I sh- could say, I think this series goes seven. But I think Tampa Bay finds a way to pull out pull it out in game seven, kind of like how they found a way in the game last year. Now, yes, they were up 3-1 to the Astros, and then lost the next two and won in Game 7. I could, I'm not going to say they're going to blow a 3-1 lead, but I can see the series being very competitive. Good pitching on both sides, good offense on both sides. And I think these are two of the top four highest-scoring offenses in the game. I think the Rays, I believe, are like number one, and I think the White Sox were like number three at one point. I don't know how the season finished up, but at one point, the White Sox, I believe, were at four, and the Rays were at number one. So these, these teams score a lot of runs. But again, like I said, pitching is really good, and I, I like Lance Lynn, I like Carlos Rodon, I like Giolito, I like the Rays bull, uh, the uh, White Sox bullpen, but I like the Rays too. And the Rays find a way; they had the better manager. You know, Tony La Russa. I know you know <laughs> people hate Tony La Russa. I know Kevin Cash made the dumbest decision in postseason history, pulling Blake Snell last year. But historically, Kevin Cash is one of the best, if not the best, manager in baseball. With that team, he knows how to win. Adding guys like Shane Baz potentially going to get some some burn in the bullpen. He's amazing. He put, he's pitched pretty well. Luis Patino, you know, a guy they got from the Blake Snell trade. He's going to be getting some bullpen arm. You know, Kittrich and you know Yarbrough, and it's just so many arms for Tampa. And you really cannot bet against them. So I'm going to go Tampa Bay in back to back World Series. They get back. They beat the White Sox in seven. Setting up who will be playing the Tampa Bay Rays in the 2021 World Series. And let's get the National League over with. It's a battle of the NL Centrals. I know, but I don't think no one would have thought this going in how the season's played out that the last two teams in the National League would be coming from the National League Central, but I think it'll be the Milwaukee Brewers hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. And I'm going with the Milwaukee Brewers in six games over the St. Louis Cardinals. This is where the Cardinals' magic dies out, kind of like it was last year uh, in 20. 20 in 2019 where they got to the to facing the nationals and then got beat by the nationals this is where i think the magic runs out for the cardinals and i do think they lose in six games i know they've played the brewers pretty well you know it's pretty back and forth you know obviously big rivalry two good teams but again not having jack flaherty and having we don't know what you're going to get from dakota hudson obviously they have wainwright and their bullpen with geo and reyes and uh tj mcfarland The, the cardinals have a really good bullpen too but Josh Hader in that rotation, I think having that elite three-headed monster, I think this could be a version. They could be the version of the Washington Nationals where they have three elite pitchers. They're going to bring starters out of, out of the bullpen. And with Hader being the lockdown guy, not being as used as much as he's used in past years, 
that ninth inning is over with with their bullpen, and they can be you know, so Craig Council is very flexible. Who he's going to pick, you know, and he's a guy that will play the matchups and will play, you know, play the hot hand. And again, I think the Cardinals have a better offense. I will say that I think they have the better. If you put their pit teams on paper, I think the Cardinals have the best pl- offensive player in Nolan Arenado. But the Brewers, like I say, they find a way. They play small ball. They produce runs, and they produce enough with that elite starting pitching to. Win games. I think it's the same way. You know, as much as I love the Cardinals, I'm wearing red, so you know maybe that was a kind of a, you know, obviously I'm a Mets fan, but the car I do live in Missouri. I do I do support the Cardinals to an extent. I do watch them. That's why I, you know, I can give a little more insight. I'm obviously watching my grand my grandfather is a huge Cardinals fan. I partially you know cheer for him, but obviously I'm a Mets fan, as you guys can see. Even I'm not in my normal setup. I always find a way to get a Mets backdrop. But I'm going with the Brewers, and it'll be a Tampa Bay Rays Milwaukee Brewers World Series. So there you go. World Series, Brewers, Rays, who's winning the World Series? And I am going with the Milwaukee Brewers to win the 2021 World Series championship in seven games. This is just going to be great pitching, great starting pitching, great bullpens against great bullpen, great starting pitching, great manager versus great manager. And I'm going to go with the I'm going with the Brewers rotation over the Rays, even though the Rays can pull out anybody and get five innings and or get innings when they need it. I'm going with Chicago. I'm going with Milwaukee because again, having a side potentially three Cy Young candidates in your rotation, I think they are like the Washington Nationals in 2019, where that rotation will carry them. The Rays, this is going to be low scoring, two to one, one nothing, three one games. These aren't going to be high scoring blowout games. It is going to be which manager makes the game-altering decision to screw their team over with. I can see Kevin Cash overusing the analytics, and something comes back to bite him where he's playing the matchup, and then, boom, the Brewers will get a two-out single and get the run in or something. That there will be one thing kind of like the Blake Snell move. where I'm not saying to the highest extent. It could be something that's playing the matchup and the, and the Brewers win. But there is going to be a decision that Kevin Cash is going to make that will cost the Tampa Bay Rays the World Series again. Maybe not to the extent where it's like obviously highly criticized, but I think it's a little mistake that he will make, and it will cost the Tampa Bay Rays the World Series. A la what I said in 2019, I got to pick a World Series, or 2020, I got to pick a World Series MVP, and I am going with... Again, I think I'm going to go pitching because I think this is going to be like how Steven Strasburg won it. Somebody in that big three is going to get it. I know a lot of people are giving a love to Corbin Burns, probably winning the Cy Young. I'm going to go with the World Series MVP being Brandon Woodruff. He's going to be probably pitching game two, and I think he potentially pitches game game six and just dominates. I think he can have a great postseason. I think he's the guy. I know Burns is the ace. Woodruff's ace two, I guess, a 1A in that rotation. I'm going to go Brandon Woodruff for your World Series MVP. And the Milwaukee Brewers winning in seven games in a great series. If you're a baseball fan, you're going to love it. It's pitching, defense, and timely hitting. Who knows? So those are my predictions. Leave them in the comment section down below. Where are you? What is your? You can leave your full world playoff prediction. You can leave your World Series prediction. Your World Series MVP. I'm back. I'm not back. This is just I will be able to upload content when I can. I will not get out of Luis Rojas' video. I'll put it right here. Luis Rojas is gone. Cool. Everybody's happy. Um, maybe I'll stream tonight, potentially. Maybe. Maybe I'll stream tonight. Who knows? But uh, maybe you guys want, depending on how this what time I get this video out and edited, maybe we uh, upload a little, little movie the show stream tonight, potentially. But uh, thank you guys for watching, as always. Thank you for if you're coming back. Um, one sub away from 250. So obviously, if you're new, make sure you drop a sub. I'm trying to get to 250. Obviously, trying to get to 2,000. That's the big goal. Maybe by next year we can hit that goal. But obviously, the Mets offseason. Starts in a couple weeks. Obviously, the season's over with, sadly. So, thank you guys. If you watched all the way to the video, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys' you know, support still, even with me not uploading co- as much content as I want. Hopefully, again, like I said, Christmas time, I'll be back home. Maybe, who knows, maybe I'm back sh- sooner. But I will obviously appreciate you guys watching, liking, dropping comments, subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.